is kind of like everyone remembers where they were when they they heard the news, you know, that the season was canceled. Where were you and what was your reaction? Uh, well, I was actually in practice with my team and going into that practice, they had asked me at the beginning, is our season over? What's happening? Are we going to Oregon State? What's going on? And so I didn't have um, final answers with for them, but I remember knowing that today is a really important day because there is a highly a uh, high possibility that it could have been their last practice, their last everything. And so uh, we were in Kenny Gym, and I just told my staff, I said, "We're going to change practice today. We're gonna we're gonna be together. We're gonna go to our events together. We're gonna cheer together. We're gonna watch each other together. We're gonna celebrate every single turn. We're gonna celebrate each other." And since the athletes didn't have answers, they just really went onto every single turn and on, on the equipment and they cheered their hearts out for each other. You could see the passion, the love, and the just the privilege that they felt that they were able to do what they were gonna do. None of them were crying, sulking, angry. It was a really awesome opportunity to have an amazing last practice. And I just remember being in the middle of the practice and getting the message from athletic director Josh Whitman saying, all right, here's the final ruling. Big 10 is done. All practices are going to cease. Everything's going to end. And I was like, all right, this really is the last day. And, and I kind of brought tears to my eyes, not because it was the last day, but watching how they were handling their last day. And I was just really proud of my girls. And at the end of it, we sat down and they just looked at me and it was like they wanted to know. And I couldn't tell them because the announcement hadn't come out yet. I had to go to a meeting with the entire department. And so I said, all right, ladies, after this meeting, we'll have answers. So let's meet back here and we're gonna walk through this, whatever the results may be. And we got together and had about like a two hour team meeting where everybody just processed together and asked questions and some of them cried together and then they shared stories. It was, it was a really special time in a really tough circumstance. Yeah, you mentioned they, they were asking questions. What were some of those questions that they asked you and what were maybe some of their concerns that they had with the season kind of coming to an abrupt end? I think they, at that point, it was so fresh that the announcement was that our seasons were done. They were wondering, does that mean postseason is over? I mean, the Big Ten had said that we're no longer to compete, but is that going to mean, what does that mean for regionals? What does that mean for nationals? What does that mean for rankings? What does that mean for uh, training? Are we going to be able to open gym? Uh, it, all those kinds of questions. And so at that point, I don't think they all knew what to ask, but they just knew that life was about to change and they had no idea what that was going to look like. And so I did the best I could to answer the questions, but then to really re revert the focus and change the focus to be how would, how do we, how are we going to respond during this time? And I, I right away just shared with them that, okay, ladies, the way I look at this is we're not going to have time together, but you're going to have a lot more time on your hands. So what you do with your time right now is going to be so crucial. The Write the thank you note to the family member that you never wrote and, you know, read the book that you never had a chance to do the things that you always said that you didn't have time to do because stress and school and anxiety, all that's going to cease. So now is your opportunity to take care of the stuff that basically caused you a lot of that stress and anxiety to begin with. Let's deal with that and let's move forwards and come back stronger. And then we just brainstorm some ideas of how we're going to stay connected. Awesome. It seems like you definitely have a, a really positive outlook on all of this. Um, and I think that's kind of the case across the board. You know, people are trying to turn it, um, you know, just into a positive situation. So um, now that you guys have kind of had a little bit of time to let it sink in a little bit, have you been in communication with any of your athletes? And how has life changed maybe from that initial reaction to now? Yeah, we've been in communication. We have done um, some fun things where uh, I sent them all a link to uh, beachbody.com. They're doing all their workouts are free for two weeks. And so I just said, hey, guys, like you guys can log in and you can do any of these workout programs if you want on your own. And so as awkward as it was, I did the first workout. I was super sweaty and gross. And I sent a picture in the whole group thread with like day one. And then shortly after that, all the girls, day one, day one, day one, they all started doing it. And my, uh, Caitlin Betts, my assistant, she, one of one of my assistants, she did the, she did the challenge. And so 
day two, day three, everybody just was really showing each other. I don't, it's not so much about, hey, we're working out. It's about, hey, we're connecting. And, um, and we did the same thing with handstand contests and just little things that we can do when we're apart to encourage each other. And then we've set up some uh, Zoom calls with each class and staff calls and uh, we've sent surveys to them. And we're just really in the process of compiling what their needs are so that I can make sure we meet their needs. And then I just really want to challenge everybody in my program and in my staff to think outside the box. Let's get out of the box. Let's find a new way. Let's do something better than it's ever been before. So that when we all come back, uh, we are the team that has the cutting edge type um, approach. And let's, let's do that. I just think we have to think outside the box. How difficult is it to keep up uh, with gymnastics? And I was talking to Justin Spring about this a little bit, and he said, you know, it's hard to go two weeks without doing any kind of gymnastics because then you lose the skill. So what's your take on that? What is your expectation for the team to maybe maintain some of their, their skills and techniques? I agree with Justin. It is very difficult. You cannot simulate gymnastics physically anywhere. I mean, you could go on a playground and you can uh, do – like swinging on a bar that you don't have the right grips, that's not gonna be the same. You could go, if gyms were open, you could go in a CrossFit gym, you could work out, you can get more explosive, you could sprint, you can do different things to train, but you cannot train the sport without doing the sport. But on the flip side of that, I think that my athletes, if they commit to the mental training aspect of gymnastics and they train every skill, every turn, they actually visualize it and they, they put themselves through it mentally, it will be like they physically did it and we will not regress nearly as much as they would if they just check out mentally. And that's what we're gonna focus on as a program right now. What's the reaction from your seniors? I know there has been some talk about possibly letting winter sports come back, but I know given the nature of the sport, it is really physically demanding. So I don't know if you've had any of these conversations with your seniors, but is this kind of, you know, you're four and, and they're, they're done? Uh, no, I think they were really devastated at first. They felt really lost. They felt very, it felt surreal to them because they all knew their end was coming and they were emotionally preparing for the end as uh, that's something that's so really important to me philosophically with my programs is that by the time my athletes are done, that they're ready to be done and let go, that they don't feel unfulfilled and that they don't feel like their identity anymore is tied up in an athlete or a gymnast, but their identity, they can take everything they learned through being a gymnast and apply it to who they're actually going to be next. And so my girls, the seniors were, they were disappointed. They were, um, they didn't know what to do. <laughs> and I think that for a lot of them, they're going to close that door and feel fulfilled, which makes me really proud of them. And maybe if we do get a year back, maybe one of them will come back, which would be awesome. So I think it really just depends on each individual person, where they're at and where their physical bodies were at the point of being 22 years old and doing gymnastics. So we'll see. I, I really hope that the NCAA will give it as an option for athletes to have a year back, but I don't personally feel like it needs to be the university's responsibility to pay for that year. This uh, NCAA just needs to allow them that option and they can take out a loan or do what every other student does when they want to do something like school and a sport. So, right. Yeah. Um, so this weekend or last weekend, you guys would have been at, at the big 10 championships. Uh, where do you feel like, you know, you guys were at heading in, heading into that weekend. Uh, we were absolutely peaking at the right time, uh, peaking at, at the end, pulling all together. We had worked through uh, the gymnastics aspect of it, the cleanliness of the sport, the finishes, the sticks, the all the details that every school does in order to be ready for postseason. But I know that my team was mentally and they were unified in a way that they were going to go in and they were going to do extremely well. And I think that you can look at our results, my first year third, my second year second. They were going to go into it with the mentality of winning, even if they hadn't scored as well as other teams yet in our Big Ten. That wasn't going to stop them because they were peaking at the right time. So that's probably the most disappointing thing for me is for them not to get to see the fruit of their hard, hard labor. I know you do have a lot of underclassmen. Do you feel like they're now able to kind of take the baton and head into to next season? Yeah, I do. I think the underclassmen know, even though the freshmen didn't get to go through a postseason, they 
um, they're going to be hungry. And when they, when they do get to come back and they do get to go through a postseason, we're not going to take it for granted. And so I think it's going to light a fire in a lot of them and in all of them, I hope.